everybody, I'm back with another Gas Mask Reader book review. This time around, it's another horror novel. In fact, this time it's a Japanese horror novel. The 22nd Vampire Hunter D, which I think is... I think there are still two more ones available in English that I haven't read yet, which will be 23 and 24. That I'll get to eventually. And this 25th one is out, I think, next year, which I will also get to eventually. And I assume there's 26 and 7, and I don't know how the heck long this series goes on for, to be honest. But anyway, this particular one is White Devil Mountain. And of course, the series is by, and I'm certain to pronounce the name wrong because it's Japanese, and I am not very good at pronouncing Japanese names. So I will apologize to the author for mispronouncing his name. Well, not, well, not, yeah, I'm not going to get it right. Hidi Yuki Kikuchi. I guess. Or something similar, hopefully, to that. Anyway, if you've never read the series, basic premise of the novel is this. It's set uh, several thousand years in the future. At some point, vampires who are who are referred to as nobles, at least I assume the ones who were born as vampires are called nobles, I think. I was never entirely clear on the different classifications of vampires in this series, to be honest. But anyway, uh, you know, several thousand years ago, they conquered the earth, you know, were in charge for thousands of years or something, and then they slowly entered a period of decline, and eventually humanity took back over, but... Now, of course, there are monsters and stuff all over the place because when they were in charge, the vampires liked to make monsters and stuff because, you know, they're vampires. That's the general premise for the series. This particular book is D, who is the protagonist for the series, who is a dump here. That's, you know, half human, half vampire, if you don't know, has been hired to go to the White Devil Mountain because there, basically there was an ancient, e really, really evil vampire known as Duke Gilzen who was so evil even the other vampires didn't like him so they basically buried him alive and locked up in a coffin somewhere and then an archaeologist dug it up because you know, that's what archaeologists do. They always dig up ancient evil vampires that are have been sealed away because they're so evil. Even the other evil vampires don't like them. And the casket that was supposed to be, in the plane that was supposed to be transporting the casket to the capital crash landed on White Devil Mountain, which by a strange coincidence, not really, just happened to be the mountain that Duke Gilzin had, you know, had his castle on several thousand years ago before he was sealed up. And you know, D is hired by the townspeople and I think like the college that the archaeologists work for or something to go up to the mountain and try and bring the survivors and the casket down. And naturally he has to say that he of course will do that if he can, but if he calls on his open, he is not going to be bringing the vampire back alive because he's vampire hunter D. So if there's an ancient evil vampire running around, he's going to kill it. And then, you know, he goes up there to the mountain with a bunch of other random people who he doesn't want with him, but who will more or less force themselves on him. And then the castle, so the you know, Gilson's castle suddenly rebuilds itself because he has access to ancient technology and he has, of course, been released. Duh. <laughs> Wouldn't be much of a story if he hadn't been. And they end up getting into fights and crap and, and that seems to be fairly usual. DA can't just go and beat him, so this guy has to be super tough and actually give D a run for his money. Because otherwise the book would be over too quick. So there was, you know, some question as to whether or not D will win, but since, you know, he's the hero of the series, there's not all that much question. And that's generally the plot as much as I can try to summarize it without getting too spoilery. So now that I've given you the plot, I will 
try to read a little bit of the first chapter for you, just like I always do. Whiteness dominated their entire field of view. Moreover, they were being madly tossed by seemingly impossible turbulence, which had left the aircraft groaning for the last 30 minutes. This is bad! If we don't lose some altitude, she'll never hold together, the pilot said, taking the cheap cigarette he'd long since smoked out of the filter and crushing it against the floor before grabbing the oak again. Suddenly the door behind him opened. The pilot clucked his tongue. Leave it to the most worthless guy he knew to show up at absolutely the worst time. Of course, there was no one else riding with them besides the guy in the coffin. The man had just stepped through the doorway when the aircraft lurched wildly to the right. More than the screams of the pest clinging to the door, it was the creaking coming from the aircraft's panels that concerned the pilot. Hold on tight, I'm taking her into a dive, the pilot shouted. Without bothering to turn around, he rapidly pushed the yoke further and farther forward. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell is going on? The pest asked, his teeth chattering. Damned if I know, the pilot replied while desperately working the yoke. Half of his remark was him trying to put a scare into the man, but the other half was serious. It was too late to escape the turbulence. The aircraft's screams were telling him. Well, if we're lucky, we'll pull a crash landing in this mountain, in the mountains. And if we're out of luck, we'll break apart in midair. Hell, this crate wasn't built for flying this time of year. And you were paid a good sum of money on account of that. You are in no position to complain about it now. You knew that before you took off. Yeah, whatever. You're right about that, egghead. But us flyers are a superstitious lot. We're carrying that coffin, and if we go down, I'm blaming it on what's inside it. That alone will be saved, the spindly pest. The archaeologist Geeson shouted angrily. He was so determined it moved the pilot for a moment. Any researcher of nobility on the planet would give their life or soul to look at what's inside. I don't care if we end up smashed to pieces. We've got to get it safely to the capital. In that case, why didn't you use the highways? The pilot shot back. He focused his attention on the stark scene outside his windows, but he immediately turned back to the aged archaeologist who felt a weird presence. Some part of the aircraft was groaning horribly. The panels had always worried him. The face of the gray-haired and gray-bearded archaeologist in his mid-fifties had become a rictus. Why? The man began in a voice like a specter. Why did you ask? Huh? In front of the wide-eyed pilot, the scrawny, crane-like face cocked an ankle. Why did you ask such a thing? Oh, I hadn't given it any thought. But I'm forced to answer what shouldn't be said. The man's voice was joined by the brief sound of a signal, a radar warning. The pilot turned his eyes forward again in regret. From the fat, from the far reaches of that world of white, an even whiter shape was approaching, a mountain. And that mostly you know, serves as a setup for, you know, to let you know what the plot is. They you know, fly around for a bit and then eventually crash and uh, that's basically a setup, but it gives you a good sense of how the story goes. Only there's you know, a good bit more action once D shows up, because he you know, basically jumps around and chops people into pieces quite a bit. Overall, I'd say it's a decent enough story. But, you know, as with any long-running series, and 22 volumes is definitely long-running, it tends to get a bit repetitive as it goes on. And also, as often happens with super-powered characters like D, 
there's not all that much suspense over how it's going to turn out because you know he's whatever the bad guy is, even if the bad guy is somebody who's supposedly stronger than him, by the end of the novel, he will somehow magically be stronger and manage to beat the guy, because that's the way it always happens. He's, he's the hero of the series, and he's not going to get killed, or it's the end of the series. And, like I said, there are more books after it, so this is obviously not the end of the series. One other, one problem I did have with the book is I thought it dragged a little bit, but this is mostly because it, this is actually originally two novels. This this is one of the Japanese light novels, which means it's you know, originally a shorter novel written for the young adult market. And for the American publication, they combined the two parts into one, which is usually what they do for the Vampire Hunter D series. Which you know the problem with that is it tends to make it drag because it's two novels with you know, one plot and I just found a bit slow in spots but still generally enjoyable enjoyable enough that I will give it the four gas mask rating definitely worth checking out this series if you haven't but you, know, you should probably start at the beginning and work your way up because as is usual with these the first novels are the be best and it tends to get repetitive and drag a little bit as it goes on. And that's really all I have to say about this book. I'll be back again probably next week with some more reviews of other books, including a book that I got a review copy of from the publisher, and, th th and also this month's free ebook that Tor gives out as part of their monthly book club. And we'll hopefully get both of those reviewed next week. And until then, keep on reading. Goodbye. If you like this video, please click subscribe or watch some of my older videos. If you think the book I reviewed sounds interesting, buy a copy. There are always links to the Amazon store in the description for this book and any other books I mentioned. If you have any suggestions on other books I could read, or any other comments, queries, insults, or anything else you want to say, please feel free to mention it in the comments section.